So in a really sad story coming out of uh, last week, a federal judge by the name of Esther Salas, her son was shot and killed by a man who had pretended to be bringing them a package. He rang the doorbell, and as soon as her son answered the door, he opened fire, uh, killing her son and wounding her husband. He then ran away, and there was a giant manhunt for this person. Uh, it looks like they found, they found out who it was. Um, it's a very interesting story, because uh, the authorities believe that they found the guy in, um, let me find, yeah, Solomon County, New York, well, with the self-inflicted gun wound. Uh, he was a, a pr an anti-feminist, pro-males rights lawyer. Very interesting. Didn't even really know one of those things really existed. Um, but, uh, yeah, his name is Roy Den Hollander. And uh, he brought a case before her a few years back. And I don't know the specifics, and the specifics of that case have not been released, so we don't really know. Uh, I'm sure they're out there if you look. Uh, but that's the only correlation between this man and Judge Salas. There's other interesting things about this case that... Um, are peculiar. For instance, Esther Sellis was um, about to work on a case with Deutsche Banks uh, in association to Jeffrey Epstein. I'm not saying that there is any sort of correlation there at all. Uh, it seems like Esther Sellis was a kind of a feminist, and this Roy Den Hollander was an anti-feminist, and, and you can you can kind of follow the logic there and how they would have interacted. Um, Esther has also reported that she's had many death threats, although she said she has not had many lately. Uh, within the fat past like six months to a year, she has not gotten any. So it does seem as a weird time, because four days prior to the shooting, again, she was meant to go um, handle this case against Deutsche Banks. Uh, and Jeffrey Epstein. And now we have uh, her son who has passed away. I think there is a lot here. Uh, even if this isn't a case of intimidation, you know, this isn't connected to Jeffrey Epstein, it's not connected to Deutsche Banks, um, it's still a major uh, moment in a country when judges are being killed because of the way they rule. Um, this a, it's a huge problem. You can see it in almost every third world country. Once they start a decline, this is one of the, the main marks that happens in a society, is that judges are killed for doing their job, uh, targeted at their own homes. So however this plays out, if there's a, a connection to... Um, Epstein in Deutsche Banks, or if it is just this thing with Hollander. I will continue to follow this case because of the implications of what it says not only about our society, but potentially what it could mean in the Epstein case as well. Um, one thing I want to say, though, is I'm barely curious what a lot of you guys think about it. Do you think that uh, there's enough... You know, th there's enough points on the map that connect Epstein and Judge Salas. I mean, it seems pretty right there. <laughs> uh, but on the other hand, do you just avoid this other case, this other situation with, with Hollander, uh, who's a kind of seemed like on the opposite side as a lawyer. And by the way, he, he was found next to a package that was addressed to him. So it looked like he might have used that package to pretend like he was going to deliver it to their house. Uh, but yeah, I'm really curious what you guys think. Is this the, uh, I don't know, um, is this some third party working maliciously to intimidate people from looking into Jeffrey Epstein, or was this just a psychotic lawyer who just went off the edge? I I'm really curious what you think.